Tonight, a frightening collapse during a field trip that sent more than a dozen children to hospital. The students and the structure that suddenly gave way. One moment I was on the bridge, the second moment I was falling through the air onto the ground. The panic among parents. I was just totally broke down. Like how this happened. No reprieve from raging wildfires in Nova Scotia. When you look at those pictures, you're seeing our houses. The risk and an urgent plea. But it's time to, to pitch in with whatever you have. Plus, a Canadian quest for spelling supremacy. Feels great to represent my country. The final word from Windsor, Ontario's Isaac Brogan. <laughs> CTV National News with Omar Sachadina. Good evening, everyone. The excitement of a late spring school trip quickly turned desperate and dangerous after a group of fifth graders took a terrifying tumble. One student said he heard a cracking sound. Then the next moment, he was on the ground, falling several meters from Winnipeg's Fort Gibraltar, the site of historical reenactments. Anxious parents left wondering if their children were among the victims. I was just worried about all the kids. Just make sure everybody's, all the kids are okay. It's just, it just so heartbreaking too. CTV's Manitoba Bureau Chief Joe Makishon tonight on the students' conditions and the panic. A replica fort is the scene of an investigation focused on a collapsed second story platform where a class of grade five students had fallen six meters. This boy says part of the structure gave way. One moment I was on the bridge, the second moment I was falling through the air onto the ground. A code orange was declared at Winnipeg's Children's Hospital, a possible mass casualty event. We uh, assessed 28 patients, uh, 17 of which were transported, one adult and 16 children. In the end, none of the injuries were life-threatening. Three of the students were rushed to hospital in unstable condition. One boy needed surgery for a broken bone. He will stay in hospital overnight. It could have been so, so much worse. Um, we were prepared for the worst. The students, 10 and 11 years old, were on a school field trip to Winnipeg's Fort Gibraltar. The emergency sent parents scrambling, some to the students' private school, others to hospital, as they tried to find their kids. I tried to call the school because there are too many people to calling them. They are not picking up the telephone. I couldn't get any other information. I was just, it's just like a horrible experience for me. The city-owned property is a popular tourist site celebrating Manitoba's fur trading routes. It is operated by the Festival de Voyageurs. The elevated walkway was last repaired in 2013, according to the city. The site is now shut down. Winnipeg's mayor said his thoughts are with the affected families, and he thanked Winnipeg's fire and paramedic service for their quick action. City inspectors are on scene. The investigation continues. Jill Mackishon, CTV News, Winnipeg. A dangerous situation tonight in Nova Scotia where the province says a new wildfire has ignited in Shelburne County, forcing more evacuations, including at a local hospital. It's an area where firefighters were already battling the province's largest forest fire ever. This thing has been getting up and uh, uh, rolling like a freight train. In another area outside Halifax, this is what the damage looks like from the air. You can see the burnt sections from the sky. CTV's Atlantic Bureau Chief Chris Najkate has the latest. Nearly 20,000 people have been forced from their homes in Nova Scotia, with a new evacuation order issued tonight in Shelburne County. That fire is now the largest in the province's history, growing larger each day, destroying homes and infrastructure. To anyone who's a human being, who can see the suffering that's happening uh, to Nova Scotians right now, that we're looking for help. With the hot, dry weather pushing Nova Scotia further into crisis, the province's list to the Prime Minister included military firefighters, trucks, helicopters and firefighting foam, a base camp and command post, and a 50% cost share for modular housing for those who lost homes. Wind gusts and low humidity only fueled the flames to more extreme levels today and talks of potentially bringing people back to their homes were called off. We are not keeping folks at bay because it's 
what we want to do. This is to keep people alive. We we're hoping it wasn't true. Tammy McKay is coming to terms with losing her family's manufacturing business of 21 years. And it's gone. After this picture was sent to them earlier in the week. I'm devastated. My children are devastated. I know my employees are devastated. Harry and Lutz Kotwitz got out with only the clothing on their backs after the fires took both their home and daycare facility. It's sad to hear the house has gone and all of our personal belongings, but the center was such a big part of my life and uh, the children's and families that we, I haven't processed that part yet. Halifax's mayor warned of increased fines up to $25,000 for anyone violating the fire ban after more illegal fires were reported in backyards. If you're burning on your property, uh, that is stupid, that is selfish, and that is putting people at risk. Today, these roofers are being hailed as heroes for their quick actions on Sunday, going door to door to alert people after spotting smoke in the distance. There was eight foot flames that looked like a bonfire. And then instantaneously after that, there was like a 60 foot tree that burst into flame. And there is still no word yet on the cause of that fire. Tomorrow will be another hot and dry day and rain isn't expected until the weekend. Omar. Entire lives uprooted. All right, Creason Adjute in Halifax tonight. Creason, thank you. Out of control wildfires have forced nearly a thousand people from a remote First Nation in northern Alberta. You have no reason to be in Fort Chip whatsoever, as you can see behind that the fire is raging out of control. The evacuation was done in stages, by air or by river to Fort McMurray. It's the only way out this time of year. The political tension over foreign interference took a new turn in Ottawa today after a majority of MPs in the House of Commons voted for the government's special rapporteur on the file to step aside. The vote is non-binding. But as CTV's Judy Trin reports, it's a call David Johnston swiftly rejected. All those in favour of the motion will please rise. The message sent by all opposition MPs, the special rapporteur, is persona non grata. I declare the motion carried. The motion calling on David Johnston to step aside and for a public inquiry into foreign interference to be launched was initiated by the NDP. If he sees that the will of the House is for him not to continue, I believe he will take that as a clear message that he can't continue to do his work and he'll step down. Not the case. A week after he recommended against a public inquiry and appointed himself to preside over limited hearings, Johnston said he's not going anywhere. I deeply respect the right of the House of Commons to express its opinion about my work going forward, but my mandate comes from the government. The fact of the matter is David Johnston has served this country in extraordinary capacities for decades. Johnston's report found that the government did not knowingly ignore intelligence on Chinese meddling. But critics point out he's known the Prime Minister since he was a child and was a member of the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation. The bloc leader says Johnston is a barrier the Prime Minister is unwilling to remove. He is creating a situation in which we will face the next election with the same level of threat by a foreign power into our democracy without anything having been done against it. Justin Trudeau has offered opposition leaders access to the same top secret documents Johnston had. Only the NDP is considering it, not the bloc nor the Conservatives. So he doesn't have to hide behind, and I quote the report on this, a veil of ignorance. The Prime Minister can brief all Canadians right now. Here, here. This is the second time a motion calling for a public inquiry has passed in the House. And Omar, in both cases, Liberal MPs voted against it. All right, Judy, thank you. A new legal ruling says the federal government is not obligated by law to bring home a group of Canadians with suspected ties to ISIS. We were obviously disappointed by the Federal Court of Appeal decision. At this point, uh, we're reviewing it and we're considering uh, whether or not to bring an application for leave to the Supreme Court of Canada. Four men remain in Syrian camps and jails controlled by Kurdish forces. The Federal Court of Appeal decision says Ottawa should still make efforts to repatriate them, but sets aside an earlier ruling ordering the government to do so. Some encouraging numbers out today which beat expectations. The economy grew by 3.1% in the first quarter of this year. 
fueled by higher household spending and exports. That's up from the 2.5 percent that had been forecast. But analysts say the latest data may encourage the Bank of Canada to hike interest rates again. CTV's Kevin Gallagher reports. House prices are rising again, despite the Bank of Canada's attempt to cool them off with eight consecutive interest rate hikes, the last one in January. This house was one of them that had multiple offers. Multiple offers and high level of interest. Real estate agent Ian Charlebois says bidding wars are back. With consistent demand but low inventory drives prices right up. The real estate rally is just one factor behind better than expected economic growth. Exports of automobiles, precious metals and agricultural products were strong drivers as well after months of recession fears. This is the best recession ever if it's a recession. So I would say no, this is not a, a recession, not yet. The economy might be growing, but inflation impacting essentials like housing, gasoline and especially food remains high putting a major strain on household finances, forcing an increasing number of Canadians to use food banks. We're seeing more people who are showing up who are actually employed, so uh, they are just not making enough. There's a big difference between minimum wage and a living wage. The central bank is now under pressure to increase rates, though some economists are preaching patience, as Canadians have the highest household debt in the G7, and less disposable income. I think it would be a little premature for the Bank Canada to raise rates just on uh, the first quarter results, especially given you know some of the indicators, some of the signs that uh, we're seeing uh, that suggest that economic activity will slow in, in, in coming quarters. All factors the Bank of Canada will have to weigh as it's expected to reveal whether rates will go up or stay the same next week. Omar? All right, we'll be watching. Kevin, thank you. The U.S. is one step closer to avoiding a disastrous default after a critical vote in the House. The bill is passed. The bipartisan deal would raise the debt ceiling, suspend the borrowing limit until 2025, and include massive spending cuts. The legislation moves to the Senate, where it must get at least 60 votes before the June 5th deadline. The ever-expanding race for the U.S. Republican presidential nomination is about to get larger. There are reports former Vice President Mike Pence will announce his candidacy next week, pitting him against his former boss, Donald Trump. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is also expected to enter the race next week. He advised Trump during the 2016 campaign, but later became a vocal critic. The other candidates include Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who spent his first full day of campaigning in Iowa today. On World No Tobacco Day today, Health Canada announced a first-in-the-world step to prevent smoking. A health warning like this one, poison in every puff, will be printed on every single cigarette. And particularly for the younger Canadians, there is still much more to do to avoid that heavy death toll that we're still seeing in 2023. Tobacco use kills about 48,000 Canadians each year. The new regulation will be phased in starting in August. A 14-year-old girl has been arrested and charged after allegedly setting off a firework on a crowded Toronto bus. It's just one of more than half a dozen frightening displays on the city's transit system. And as CTV's Adrian Gobriel reports, the motive might be to create extreme social media content. It's not popping. It's not popping. An explosive video. You're Screams of anger reverberate through a smoke-filled Toronto transit bus. You're this 22-second video begins with a young person looking towards a camera, smiling, holding a firework with one hand. They spark a lighter and light a fuse. Passengers begin ducking and yelling as panic from the pyrotechnic projectile spreads. Moments later, a group flees the bus. This was a large firework. Let's be clear, this was a, like a large firework that was lit, lit off. Toronto Transit is often promoted as riding the rocket. This is one of multiple TTC journeys in recent days to take a harrowing turn. Anyone that was on that bus would have been shaken up, and I think you see from some of the video the reactions of people. The Toronto Transit Commission confirmed that over the last nine days, there's been seven separate firework incidents reported on board a TTC vehicle, including two today after this latest video caught fire on social media. So there's repercussions on people who watch it. 
what they think is possible, what they think is funny, what they think is doable, what they think is normal. Normalizing extreme acts is a major concern for digital media professor Robert Latchman. The outcome of a social media viral video is rarely covered on social media. So a news report may talk about police, the news report, may, but that may never make it to the 13-year-old or 14-year-old who was on social media. It's not the fallout from this dangerous fireworks display left one person with minor injuries. The TTC tell us they have their own security video of each of the numerous firework incidents that have taken place on their vehicles in recent days. The police now have opened multiple investigations. Omar. All right, Adrian, thank you. Coming up after the break. We are very driven uh, to try to find uh, real evidence of extraterrestrial life. NASA's findings on UFO sightings, plus a wild car crash caught on camera. Unexplained objects in the sky have long been the subject of speculation and fascination. And today, in a first-of-its-kind public meeting, a panel of experts convened by NASA revealed their preliminary findings about UFOs. Here's CTV's Melanie Nagy. Has NASA encountered any aliens? 16 NASA-backed scientists openly talk about a topic once considered taboo. We are very driven uh, to try to find uh, real evidence of extraterrestrial life. The group, which met publicly for the first time today, is investigating unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UFOs as they're commonly called. Is NASA hiding anything about this? No. Since last June, they've been examining unclassified files linked to UFO sightings to determine what's really happening in our skies. Only a very small percentage of UAP reports display signatures that could reasonably be described as anomalous. Around 800 reports of unidentified objects have been collected so far, but the scientists say only 2 to 5 percent are truly unexplained. Widespread interest in UFOs has surged ever since the U.S. Department of Defense released videos of unexplained objects. The Pentagon is also analyzing sightings documented by the military, but NASA's study is separate from that. Military scientists, ultimately, their job is to protect the United States. But if you look at uh, NASA scientists, their job is to explore air and space for the benefit of humanity. NASA's team admits they've faced challenges, such as a lack of high-quality data hindering research. They've also faced harassment online simply for studying the topic. Harassment only leads to further stigmatization, significantly hindering the scientific progress. Despite that, they plan to release a formal report in July. As for whether or not we're alone in the universe. We haven't found life beyond Earth yet. But they say the search will continue. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. Actor Danny Masterson of That 70s Show has been found guilty in a rape retrial. Danny, what do you think? The 47-year-old faces 30 years in prison after the jury convicted him of raping two women in 2003. The victims, members of the Church of Scientology, testified that the church backed Masterson when they reported him because of his prominence in the organization. And Ontario has charged a popular theme park and tourist attraction in Niagara Falls. Marineland has been charged with three counts of failing to comply with an order related to the care of its American black bears. But the Ministry of the Solicitor General did not provide additional details. The park has been under scrutiny over the past few years over its treatment of its animals in captivity, but denies any wrongdoing. Still ahead, the ingredients for an unexpected apology after a bakery break-in that takes the cake. We have some dramatic police body cam video tonight of a spectacular car crash in Georgia. Officers were responding to another accident when another car rocketed off the ramp of a flatbed tow truck traveling about 37 meters down a highway. The vehicle landed upside down, hit another car, and flipped over before coming to a stop. Incredibly, the 21-year-old driver survived. She was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Their proposal by the city of Mississauga to tweak the lyrics to the national anthem hit a flat note. Our home on a native 
The motion to call on Ottawa to change the lyrics has been deferred. It was inspired by Canadian R&B singer Julie Black's rendition of O Canada at the NBA All-Star Game. There's a new twist in a bizarre Vancouver bakery burglary. He like profusely apologized. He was really, really nice. Has offered to pay for the door, offered to pay for the cupcakes. The thief smashed through the glass door at Sweet Something Bakery, but he mopped up his mess before making off with half a dozen cupcakes. The owner says she asked police not to press charges against the suspect with a sweet tooth. A lot of effort to satisfy craving after the break, going for the W-I-N, making Canada proud at a world-famous spelling bee. An 11-year-old from Windsor, Ontario, who's got away with words, has captivated the crowd with his character and unique technique. CTV's Joy Malbin with the buzz on the Canadian sensation at the Scripps National Spelling Bee. It's the Super Bowl of spelling bees and stepping onto the stage, 11-year-old Canadian Isaac Brogan, who's been on a bit of a winning streak. Rendition. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> He's caught the eye of many, from his technique of air writing words to his confidence and quick wit. Barbuda. Joking with the uh, judge. Barbuda, could you please tell me what letters are in this word? Uh, you really don't want me to have to do that. I just wanted to add some like comedy to the competition because I know the spelling bee is really serious. It's serious, all right. With thousands in prize money at stake, the competition is tough. Bear receptor. And words you've never even heard of. Papillionaceous. Of course you had to say that one for me, didn't you? Well, it's compelling. I mean, to watch these kids trying to spell, you can see the storm of emotions on their face. You can see the gears clicking. Out of the 200 competitors, Isaac makes it to the semifinals. Good luck tonight. And he's become a bit of a rock star here. The last Canadian standing and spelling. Feels great to represent my country. And like, I know right now I'm like the only one, so it's like really nerve wracking. And if you think the pressure's on the kids, think about the parents, Isaac's mom cheering him on. My heart rate starts to increase very rapidly and um, I'm just very nervous. Like I'm just, re it's as if I'm up on stage with him. And with just a few dozen word wizards left, Tenrec. Isaac is stumped by a mammal from Madagascar. T-E-N-R-E-C-K, Tenric. No! You have represented your country of Canada so well. He won't make the finals, but then again, there's always next year. Joy Malbin, CTV News, National Harbour, Maryland. No question, he's done Canada proud. And that is a snapshot of this Wednesday for all of us at CTV National News. Good night.